Now that we're 13 <laughs> minutes in and yeah, we're going to cut 90% of that out. <laughs> just all leave it. All of it. <laughs> just leave it in. We're like, <laughs> He's just going to start it. <laughs> well, that's why I said 90% okay. of it. Because probably the the penetration toy is probably a little too much for <laughs> the description yeah. of the of the act. Well, it's about breeding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't well. really breed from that. He's vasectomized. But oh, yeah. Vasectomized. Vasectomized. <laughs> is that a that word? A word? <laughs> uh, I just made it up. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another grooming podcast. I'm Kathleen Austin. I'm Kat Graney. I'm Nathan Austin. And I'm Juan Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> Little twang. Twang. Little twang. Um, today, we're going to be talking about um, breeding, breeders, breeding, and what to look for. Breeding. Yeah, responsible. Um, stuff like that. But before we get into that. But first. Let's get deep. That was not the same song, but okay. The Space Jam soundtrack, though, lit. Oh, I used to love I that believe movie. I love that song. I wish it wasn't R. Kelly. I was we're not just going to like say that, anymore. yeah. But I still oh, like that yeah. song. Let's not pee on children. <laughs> you know who I like? Wait, Seal. Rune. I like Seal. Seal is lit. Yeah. A kiss from a rose. Right? Yeah. yeah. And the Batman soundtrack. Sick. <laughs> Okay, anyway. <clears throat> okay, I know this one. Actually, I want to ask this one first because um, I'm curious. I know the answer, what I would say. Which of your friends do you think would be the first to become a millionaire? And I'm going to go with Juan. For sure. <laughs> He's really? the most responsible with yeah. his money. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't have any kids to waste true. his money okay, on. Okay, question. Who would be the last? Cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, if you're counting assets and stuff, like we're not that far off, actually. Stop. Yes, we. If are. you count the the value the the value of our house mm. and the value of your business, well, then they are too. Yeah, not far off. But well, that's only the difference between having liquid a million and having like, I own a home in California, so I'm halfway <laughs> yeah, there. I, I own yeah. a home in yeah. California. Yeah, or almost there for some people. Yeah, a lot of people there. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. Nowadays, you're lucky to find a house that is under a million in California. So. I know. Well, we like to joke that Kat's um, family is rich because they have they own a house in um, Union City that's worth over a million dollars. So we're like, yeah, oh, so my you're God, you're oh, rich, they're Kat. They're you're not. rich. Actually millionaire. And a real one right here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the farthest. I, oh, I was going to say Nathan. <laughs> From millionaire. Yeah. Why? Because I feel like you're so determined that you would do, like, mm. anything you needed to. To like, if it was a goal of yours, I feel like you would like achieve it. Go like pedal yeah. to the floor for it. I you know, see that. But so recently, I've decided though that I don't want that. What I want is just to enjoy myself. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I've never been like I want to be rich, but I want to be able to do the things I want to do and be comfortable and not have to be like stressed, stressed and scrapping for it, or like you know what I mean. Like I want to go to Grimania someday, right? Mm, yeah. But when we go, I want to have the like the luxury of taking a few weeks off and yeah. enjoying Europe. Want to ball out. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like I want to be able to like really enjoy myself, but like as it stands right now, we wouldn't be able to take that much time off of work and like afford to fly to Europe and like pay for the hotel and like travel around for several weeks. So like that's yeah. that's what I mean. Like I don't want to be like rich. Like I don't want like all the super expensive, you know, like brand name, like I'm going to wear all Gucci or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care about that. I heard that real rich people don't do that, though. Well, they don't need to flaunt it. Yeah. I heard like that's a that's like a, a people that want to look rich thing. Mm. But like, I just don't need I, I don't care about like that. I just want to be and I want a house big enough for my kids and my dogs. Mm -hmm. And like, that's it. I just want to be comfortable, but be able to like, I still want to go travel the world and yeah. not have to worry about like. Can I afford it? Yeah, I'm not a like a physical person thing, but I love a good adventure. Yeah. yeah. So D anybody from all those other countries, if you want to have us <laughs> <laughs> to teach at your salon, we'd love to. <laughs> what like you know how when you were younger you would be like see something like oh my god they're rich mm -hmm. yeah. like what if, if I saw somebody that had like a big screen TV mm -hmm. I was like oh they're rich yeah they're rich or like a car with a sunroof yeah. Ooh, rich. Yeah. 
Right. Now to me, two car garage. <laughs> <laughs> now garage to me, it's w- it's when somebody is just dressed like plainly, and I know they like they have expensive there's name like brand stuff that I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know how there's like some name brand stuff or like some really like high end stuff you just don't I don't know of it. Yeah, it's like it's not Louis and it's not Gucci, but I know it's nice because I I could just look at it and tell that thing's expensive. Like yeah. some people like that you see rich. walking down the street, you can just tell. You're like. Yeah. Mm. Well, like, you know, I normally I like I enjoy like going and having like an expensive meal at like a fancy restaurant. And I never feel like too out of place. But when we went to um, Rodeo Drive, I felt really out of out of place. Mm, yeah. I don't I think, think I would never want to be that rich. No, I feel like but I don't little. even I don't own the clothes to like walk down that street comfortably. <laughs> yeah. 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 I felt really out of place. I was like, oh, my God, everybody knows I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and we but at Venice Beach we're like this is tight. Yeah. Yeah. It just felt more like, like flea market vibe. Yeah. You know, I'm cool with that. <laughs> like fit swap me, <laughs> you swap me by. That's what I'm into. You know what I mean? Yeah. The guy's like, oh my god, he has a mullet. <laughs> Ew. On yeah. Venice, they're like sick. Oh my god, he has a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so you, the boys are gonna be millionaires first. Um. Although I did think it, I. Did think it was funny. Just the other day, we were listening to the radio, and they were they were like, "Oh, what do you guys think of mullets?" And they, all the girls were like, "Ew, I hate mullets. They're so gross, right?" <laughs> and they're like, "Only some guy, like very rarely, guys can pull it off." But I will say, Nathan gets comments on his videos all the time. Uh, even girls that are like, "Sick mullet." That I had a cop. Rad. I had a cop pull up next to me yesterday when we was walking in the Best Buy. Oh, really? And he goes, "Nice mullet, man." <laughs> it's always dudes. Yeah. No, but on your, I feel like on your videos you post though, girls will be like, sick hair. Nice. So I notice well, it's because very I'm like, too. I'm like this, like. Katie I adds it to the list you. of names. Yeah, I like She's write like, them <laughs> down. <laughs> Keep an eye on Watch this. <laughs> Just kidding. You can compliment him. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> anyway, okay. Well, on that kind of same track, right? If you won the lottery, what would you spend your money on? I guess we kind of went into that, right? Well, not like I would buy myself a house, Mm -hmm. but I wouldn't want like a huge mansion. I would want just something, something with land. Mm -hmm. No, but see, we've talked about we want a compound. Yeah, we're going to buy a compound to come live in our compound. Yeah. Or we'll each have our own house. You can make it like a neighborhood where it's like like just people you know. Mm -hmm. I've I've thought about this and I feel like I would like a like a compound, but like me in the middle where like Mm -hmm. I have like all my friends on one side and like all my family on the other. So yeah. I feel oh, like that would be, be sweet. That'd be really cool. And then, I depending am- on how rich you get, you'll just hire us to be your personal assistants, yeah, for right? For sure. I would. <laughs> I'd be. Yeah. I imagine Take like care a court. Of your dogs and yeah, like a street yeah. court. Yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. And like, ev- and everyone has huge backyards, and like each house is like. But then different. it'd be cool if there was like one combined like yard. I thought yeah. about a communal pool. Yeah, that would be cool too. Like we can each have our own individual like hot tubs or something. Mm-hmm. But. <laughs> Our own individual hot tubs, but like, like next to each other, so it'll be. But like, hey! like there'd be like a, either like a lake or a pool or something mm-hmm. nice that we can mm-hmm. all just gather and have. Everyone's like, with. "Don't go in the Austin's hot tub." <laughs> yeah, everyone stay out of that one. Juan sure. and Ronnie's too. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's why we all need private <laughs> hot tubs. Well, and then we have to have a dog park. You yeah. know. Yeah. I feel like I would spend the money on like a a dog facility. That would yeah. be yeah. Sick. You know, like yeah. Yeah, we'll set come, yourself up for the future. We'll work for you. Yeah. Yeah, like having a like a pl- like something big enough for like to host competitions mm-hmm. and education mm-hmm. and like have like people travel to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd have, be great. Have you ever been to Sycamore Farms? And okay, it's beautiful there. And I that's when I think of a place I would want. That is it because there's like multiple houses on the property, but then there's like a a shop that has a like indoor training rooms and it has um grooming and boarding um, and a couple lakes with bass yeah in them. they have lakes they have like a huge covered pole barn that they do barn hunt mm. and outdoor classes like fly ball they have a dock diving pool that's what i want agility course yeah dreams that's it think about how much work you're going to be doing though well if i'm rich then i hire people to work for me yeah true and yeah then, yeah i also think i would like to Okay, I, I, I've, thought, I've thought about this before. We've all, I think I, okay, we've so all when people used to ask me, like, what's your life plan? I always assumed that I'm going to win the lottery. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I've always felt it in my heart that at some point in my life, I will win the lottery. 
Like I, I don't know do. why. Do you play? I really you hope I do. you do. Yeah, I play like occasionally. I would say how. Yeah. Yeah, I, I play, play occasionally. When it's you gotta big, play to that's win. It. Yeah, and then I would love a national um, licensing program. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I feel totally. like that would I would put money into that for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's actually my number one. Awesome. Yeah. Win the lottery. I'm gonna win the lottery. I know. And yeah, then hire us to help you. you. Yeah, I'm so rooting for you. Do you know what somebody told me that their grooming in California used to be a license? Used to have to have a license to do it. Really? You know, yeah. You know the guy that is at Pasadena and he takes care of the the vans. Mm-hmm. Like that's what he did. He said he used to be a groomer. James. Yeah, and he was. He said he was the last licensed groomer in California. He got the last license that they ever got. And I was like, wait, what the heck? But this is a long time ago, obviously, right? Yeah. But um, I don't know nothing about that. Kind of took me mm. for left field. I wanted to ask him more questions about it, but you know, like I don't think anyone, everyone needs to be like a master groomer. Everyone needs to know everything. But like Basic. cleanliness, like our hairstylists are licensed. Our, our nail technicians are licensed. The waxers are licensed. Like literally mm-hmm. every trade, for the most part, is a licensed thing. Mm-hmm. And where I, like people have to come and like you have to check. train and yeah. like yeah. And I've they, been in some really poorly maintained salons yeah. that you're like I would not bring my dog here it's well, going to get Well poorly maintained but then I mean beyond the clean. actual salon then you've got the people working in it and yeah. we've known people like we l- several like I mean this is probably like 10 years ago we ran into somebody who had a mobile grooming salon and she was like oh yeah I just like woke up and decided to be a groomer one day and like that was it. And she was like, I never did any training or anything. So she's working in a mobile by herself with n- zero training. That's so scary. Yeah. yeah. Well, and because she said she was like, oh, well, there's like so many dogs that I'm not able to do. So like I'll send them your guys' way. And I was like, okay. Send them all here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> send them all. I mean, I, I think those are all really, I mean, if I won the lottery, those would be good. I would do that too. But I want to travel too. Mm-hmm. I want to yeah. be able to travel, and I think it depends on the amount. I always go by That's amount, true. Yeah. right? Because I'm like, okay, if I win just like a million, right? You know, they're gonna tack the shit out of it. So then I'm like, okay, that's like you buy another house and uh, rent out your old house, so it's investment, right? Like you gotta invest. If it's like a couple million, you're not gonna get that much. That doesn't actually go that far. You invest in buying a couple houses to rent out, and then go from there, right? But if you mm-hmm. win the big bucks, that's when yeah. you do all that cool stuff. Yeah. It is weird though because a lot of times people end up broke. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because they don't plan. That's that's what I always think. Like, uh, you know, like if you win a couple million, that's awesome, but it really doesn't last that long. No. Yeah. So like you have to be really careful. It's not like oh, I'm quitting my job. Like, like I no, think half of it investing. goes straight to the government. So I think yeah. I'd have to work. I don't think I I'd could invest. just sit home. Well, okay. With the anxiety I've been having lately, I realized I have to work. <laughs> <laughs> I have to work. Then you can just have a salon that you can like pop into. Yeah, work whenever you feel like it. Yeah, yeah. I probably wouldn't sell the yeah. salon. Weekends would still be for dog shows for me. Yeah. I'd still do well, dogs. So I think I would just yeah. I think I'd show dogs more, over. breed more. Um, leading into our topic um yeah and like do m- all the competitions and help support and like do more teaching i feel like we do a lot more teaching yeah because um, we could travel around without having to worry about it and so it would be lit yes. one of us needs winning to- the lottery would be lit, babe. You're one right. of us yeah. needs to win the lottery <laughs> i don't very play lit. very often well th- i'm just glad to know that see because i'm always like oh if i don't have to deal with the money because then you've got all your family coming out of the woodworks right and that's, i would try to keep it as hush would, hush as possible yeah i would try and keep it a secret that's why i wouldn't be like i'm gonna go buy this and this don't worry and this, babe i can say no for you okay no see i'm not worried about me i worry about you yeah you're Showing out. you love spending money well not just that but <laughs> nathan, nathan is sucker. a sucker for uh his family oh, okay. not that we don't love them <laughs> he's but a sucker for Regular Joe smokes too. Yeah, he would be the so- like somebody would tell him a sob story and he'd be like, "Here's my money." He always oh, is giving right, money right, to right, people, right. and I'm like, he's "Bro, a, he's a good soul. He is a sweet soul." <laughs> I'm Anyways, right. he is a sucker. He's a sucker. I'm the mean one. <laughs> so what is this episode about? <laughs> this episode is about breeding dogs. 
<laughs> Just so well, you never knows. know with this podcast. Mm-hmm. You never yeah. know. <laughs> Gabriel's episode. No more kids for Nathan. <laughs> so, I mean. You've been vasectomized. <laughs> You've been vasectomized. That's my new favorite word. Yeah. Um, well, so, I mean, I think something that a question that we get asked a lot um, from groomers and also clients is like, how do I find a good breeder? Right. Like, what are the things that you're looking for? Um, and so I, I always try to like, you know, look for this, this, or this, or like, look at these reds or red flags. Right. So, um, we're going to share those with you today. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, what would you say a responsible breeder is or a reputable breeder? Well, (laughs) in my mind, like first off, right. It's somebody that, that shows their dogs and finishes them. Mm Mm-hmm. Because that to, off the top, that's proving, or it's supposed to be proving that your dog is a breeding quality. Right. Well, so I do think that's a good thing, a, a great thing to point out, right? Is a lot of people um, often think like, oh, we're just like showing it AKC shows for fun, right? The confirmation shows like, oh, it's just so fun to like parade your dogs around. But I don't think that they quite understand what the point of it is. And it is to evaluate breeding stock. And so the judges are supposed to know that breeds breed standard. They don't always know it as well as they should, but they try. Um, And, um, I mean, it's hard. There's like 300-plus breeds, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, But they're supposed to look at all the dogs and evaluate which one fits the breed standard the best. Um, And so when you do finish your championship, then it's saying this dog is a breeding quality for that breed. It fits the breed standard well enough to be bred with another of that same breed to continue to produce type E standard. dogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, up to standard dogs. So that's one thing, and I think health testing, right? Yes. Absolutely, and so you can find the proper health testing on like OFA.org, I think it is, right? Yes. Yeah, different For dogs. each breed should, has their own Yeah, so they list, yeah, they list which breed should have what testing. Some, like for the Scotty, I had my patellas tested. I had her heart tested. There's a couple of like genetic things like Von Willebrand's um, you know, and I did, uh, I think I did a thyroid test. And, um, so all of these things I did, um, once she turned two, cause they have to be, a, you know, fully grown adults. Um, and then if everything passes, then, then we start looking into breeding. Right. Yeah. And it's not just like a, Ooh, I want my dog to have a date and like, Oh, your dog wants to have a date. Great. I'm looking, uh, and a good breeder should be looking at their stock. Like, what flaws does my dog have that I would like to correct? And what are her good qualities? And then when I'm looking for a male and, you know, I'm making sure that they've passed their health test, passed their, um, you know, finished their championship. And then I'm looking, like, does he have the things that I'm missing in my breed or in my, you know, in my bitch that, Hopefully, they complement each other and will produce better than what they are. Yeah. It's not just like, oh, my dog's a Finnish champion and your dog's a Finnish champion, so they're perfect together. No, you want to make sure that they are complement each other. Right. Yeah. Because you, your goal as a breeder is to produce a dog better than your own. Mm-hmm. Improve the breed. Yeah. So we're always trying to, I mean, because there's no perfect dog, right? Mm-hmm. So it's always trying to figure out which combination is going to make a better version of the dog that fits in the breed standard. Um, so, I mean, and what you're looking for is like for the health of the dog, right? It's not just absolutely. like what's prettier. It's like, you're looking to the hips and the bite and mm-hmm. you know, the return of a bra arm or whatever for motion. Yeah. yeah. Like it's a, it's not just like that one's pretty. So that one, you know, absolutely. It's yeah. purpose driven, right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. like our dogs are very deep chested and they use their arms to dig even though they have those little arms for the Scotties, right? So like having the proper depth of chest and the pronounced fore chest and the return of upper arm, it's all super important mm-hmm. um, to proper movement and being able to do their job. So definitely, um, you know, getting the right reach as they're moving. And drive. Um, and, yeah, and drive. Drive and is the way their back legs. So all of those things are super important and um you know, like we said, no dog is perfect, right? So mm-hmm. when I'm looking like, what is my dog lacking? And then I'm looking for a male that hopefully, I mean, genetics don't always work the way you want, right? So sometimes you could have two dogs that you think are going to perfectly complement each other. And sometimes genetics just give you the 
the opposite. shit of both. <laughs> yeah, I think, never, but you're trying. Well, I mean, just like humans, if you have like a really gorgeous dad and a really gorgeous mom, and sometimes their kids aren't that yeah. gorgeous, <laughs> you know, like you could everything could be lined up right, and it just yeah. they can yeah they can definitely get the bad qualities from each yeah. parent and yeah. just be bad in both departments. I, and, mm-hmm. I think a a good breeder, a reputable breeder, should be able to look at their own stock critically. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's something like that when they're evaluating puppies, they should be able to like if you're buying a puppy, they shouldn't be like this. I mean, who knows? But there's no perfect dog. Yeah. Right. So like this dog yeah. is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Mm. No. Well, and unfortunately, like as much as, you know, often we're evaluating our puppies between eight to 12 weeks. Right. And, ho- you know, you hope that um, what they look like around that age is what they're going to end up like as an adult. But. It, you know, like you're still guessing. Yeah, yeah. It's a good like start, but it's not definite. Oh yeah, like my Francine, yeah. beautiful, and then her bite went off. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's, that's that. happened with our Shit mini happens. too. Our mini, his bite went off, and his testicles went back up in his body. So, <laughs> so we get people a lot that are like, "Oh well, I don't want to show mm-hmm. dogs, so like I don't need to buy from somebody who shows shows dogs. I just want a pet." But we have plenty of dogs in our litters that don't fit what we're looking for for breeding. And that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. That doesn't make them less than or anything like that. But um, the dogs that we are picking to keep, to show, and to use for breeding later, uh, we're looking for something very specific. Either that complements our line, that you know we're looking for something specifically for our line to enhance it. So we're like, oh, we're keeping that dog. Or, uh, I mean, a lot of things have to line up. They have to be, you know, they have to fit in the breed standard well enough to finish. But they also have the right personality for it. Some dogs are just absolutely gorgeous, but they're just not showy at all. They don't care for it. They're like, mm-hmm. meh. And we're not in the we're not trying to like force dogs to show. If they don't like it, then yeah. off yeah. to a pet home. Fantastic. I, I always think breeders that don't show their dogs, it only takes a couple of generations to have a dog that, that looks totally wonky. Yeah. Yeah, that you quickly know? loses like, its typiness. Yeah, like I, I've seen some poodles that are totally just totally the ones I see the most that are most, but they don't have a general shape. Or, but doodles, I don't know. Since there's no standard to breed them to, mm-hmm. so like a golden doodle, they all look different. They're yeah. all like one. And I don't. I'm sure you groomers out there like shaved one down, and you realize they're super straight in the front, pinched in the front, elbows out, easty westy feet, right? Back like cow hawk because legs, there's no understanding of the structure. And if you don't understand structure, just basic structure of a dog, then you shouldn't be deciding what dogs should be breeding. Mm-hmm. But that's also important for the dog's health in the future. Mm-hmm. If your breeder's not health testing and doing all these things and breeding for a proper structure, then that dog will end up with early arthritis or other joint issues because he's just not built well mm-hmm. enough to be mm-hmm. healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I And I don't want to beat up on doodles because there is breeds that have worse structure and it's like the um the bullies like not mm. pitbulls but the new fad of like bullies and the, pocket bullies yeah they're literally Exotics. breeding those dogs disabled yes yeah. right they're building them i've had several that come in and can't walk <laughs> past turns to the floor we've got them coming in when we've had one come in as a puppy and it never came back again it couldn't walk mm-hmm. you know it's it was so and it looked buff but really what was out is its shoulders were completely, instead of being back, they're completely rolled forward. And they think, oh, my dog looks buff. No, it's 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 hurting. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. And that's, it, yeah. it's super upsetting. It's super upsetting because people think, oh, it looks so cool. But it just comes from ignorance of not knowing how a dog should be built. And that, uh, yeah, I will say as a groomer, that is hard. Where I, I feel like over the years we've seen a lot of dogs come in. Um, And you can, you know, like you can just tell you're like, this dog is going to suffer. It's going to suffer in its life. It's going to have like such bad arthritis. It's going to have joint pain. It's, you know, it it might even already be suffering as a younger dog just because um, they bred it just to look cool. But it's actually not well built at all and it can barely move and it hurts and it it makes you sad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the problem with a lot of the doodles, too, because they're getting, say, a golden retriever. And they're getting a poodle, but they're not getting it from a reputable breeder because a reputable breeder wouldn't sell that dog to someone who has the intention of making doodles. Mm -hmm. So they're just getting back. So they're getting, yeah, these backyard bred dogs who are already probably poor quality, off standard, can't move, (laughs) healthy, neurotic, neurotic, and they're breeding them together to make this mutt that is going to have all these issues. And then... They're going to breed that one to another one and 
they're just, yeah. just like a hodgepodge of it's crap. It's hard to talk to people about it because they love their dogs so much. Well, and we're and not we, like, and, and we it's love not the their dog's dogs. fault. We love no. their dogs too, right? But we want dogs to be healthy and we want them to not suffer from these things that are easily preventable. And, and also like these are just the facts, right? Like the facts are like... The facts, the facts are, like, are the facts. and <laughs> The facts are the facts. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> and then now, now I'm going to charge you a cheese tax. Um, just kidding. Cheese tax. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, but, uh, you know, so something we talk about in here a lot is uh, purebred doesn't mean well-bred. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's why I always, I always say, like, are they showing their dogs, like we talked about? Are they health testing? What does their contract look like? Because a lot of dogs come with a contract. Um, you know, a good breeder, we specifically, and most breeders I know, will take a puppy back or a dog back if at any point you can't take care of them anymore or, um, you know, something emergency happens in your life or we would never want our dogs to go to the shelter. We'll always take them back and find them a new home. I honestly think that's a red flag. If somebody, if it's not like in the contract that the breeder gets the dog back, um, yeah. that's kind of a red flag to me. Yeah. I mean, if if I were to you know to sell a puppy to somebody and they were like, hey, something happened and I want to you know a friend of mine wants the dog and I can talk to the person and make sure that everything's on the up and up, that's totally fine. But because um, I would, we would never let one of our dogs end up in the shelter. Yeah, I would never yeah. want my dogs to just end up you know, or for somebody to be like, oh, I didn't know what to do. So you know, like I'm always happy to take a dog back um, because I want what's best for them. I, I love those dogs. You pour your heart and soul into them. Um, there is, you know, there is people that are like, I'll only ever rescue a dog. And I, I respect that. And I think, you know, do, there is a lot of dogs that need rescuing. But I also think like if you only rescue dogs, now this might sound bad, but if you only rescue dogs, you're only supporting the unethical breeding of dogs, right? Because yeah. how did those dogs get there, right? Mm-hmm. How did those dogs get in the shelter? How did they get into a situation where they needed rescuing? Well, mm-hmm. the person producing them is a piece of garbage, right? And um, didn't care enough about this dog and let it get there, you know? I mean, I do see the importance of rescuing the dogs because obviously they need homes. Well, they yeah. need loving homes, all that stuff. But, I mean, you're right. We need to be supporting the good breeders. Yeah. Right. Well, and there'll always be peop- situations where dogs will breed accidentally. And, and like, there'll always be pet parents that just don't know and they let their dogs breed and there will always be idiots out there so there'll always be dogs in the shelter yeah. and that need rescuing so i commend those people but like also there's a lot of the dogs exist because of good breeders mm-hmm. yes right and if like if you look at them in the lens of they're bad because a lot of people just think of breeders as bad people all around and it, it's not true if they weren't doing their job then we wouldn't have pretty dogs around mm-hmm. You know, you wouldn't have the poodle or the golden to make the doodle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. Well, and so I think, you know, because you get people that are hardcore, like, adopt, don't shop, you know. And um, mm-hmm. I think it should be adopt or shop. That's my, you know, adopt or shop, but do so responsibly. Yeah. Do your research. Because there are plenty of... Um, um, Unethical uh, rescue, rescue groups. groups. I mean, mm-hmm. we've come across quite a few of them. And... Um, they don't all, you know, I've even heard, I've had breeders tell me that ad, like adoption places have called them trying to buy puppies from them because their adoption center was empty. Yeah. But shouldn't the whole goal of like That's a the sh- point, the whole yeah. goal of an adoption place or shelter is to not need them anymore for yeah. there not to be dogs who are in need of homes like that are, you know, like needing to be rescued. The, the point is to have no need of it. Yeah. So like yeah. it, it makes me sad that there are people out there using adoption as a guise they're, for yeah, making money. Well, some of them are flippers. Mm-hmm. Exactly what they do. They take a dog and they get it like buy it off Craigslist or something and flip it. Mm-hmm. You know? But we will say most people people that are help that are just willing just there are help. plenty of great adoption but there's always people out there that want to take advantage of a situation to make money yes and so my big thing too about like um adopt or shop right is um it kind of goes back to what you're looking for right because like for us right when we first decided to start um getting into stuff we had a specific need right mm-hmm. we wanted something for a grooming competition but it had to be a dog that was 
going to be good with children. It had to be a dog that was going to be good in the grooming environment. It had, you know, like travel well. And um, unfortunately, uh, the reality is if you get a dog from the shelter, because, yeah, sometimes um, purebred dogs do end up in shelters, not to say that they don't. But you don't know what their background is. You don't know what their health is like. You don't know, you know, like all of those things. So you are taking a risk. Um, so for us, and I think once you take that dog on, you can't that's give yours. it back. Right? That's, yeah. that's unfair to the dog. You yeah. should, uh, whatever. If you ever take on a dog, it like especially if you're getting it from the shelter, you you gotta like you gotta, gotta put, you gotta put your all into it. Well, mm-hmm. or from a breeder. So for us, yeah. it's you, take a dog, you know it's a commitment. No shame if you adopt <laughs> or shop. I think it should be no shame, like because for us that's what we needed. You know, we needed that stability. We needed to know the personality. So, like, the breeder can tell you, this dog is very outgoing. I've been watching it for the last 12 weeks. It's very showy. It's very, you know, it's, I've done all the health testing of the parents. You know, so those are the things that, um, for us, that we needed, right? But some mm-hmm. people are look, have different things they're looking for. Um, so I think both are commendable, but it's just looking at. So if, if you were to, like, make a quick list for somebody of, like, the, the red flags, what do you think those would be? I think if they... Okay, so I got my first poodle. I didn't know anything, and there was a backyard breeder. Like, literally, I went into their backyard, <laughs> and I... and I Bought it. But they didn't let me see the mom and dad. They oh. weren't there. Yeah, mm. that's... And I feel like flag. that's a huge red flag. It's like, oh, I have that's pictures of the mom and dad, but where are they? That's yeah. a red flag. You know? At least that's, the mom, you oh. know, because a lot of yeah. the males aren't there, right? Something else that I think is a red flag, and I never thought about this myself um, until later, is when they let you pick out your dog. And I feel like this is something that every a lot of mm. clients, they go like, oh, they let me pick out the one I wanted. But as we all know, dogs are very unique individuals, and I pick the dog for the person. I get to know them. Do you have children? Where do you work a lot? Where, you know, like what are the circumstances this dog is coming into? Because some dogs are more reserved. Some dogs are more outgoing. Some dogs need more attention or coddling or some dogs need less. Or And so I'm picking the dog in my litter that I've observed that I think will fit that home the best. Mm -hmm. It's not just based on cuteness factor. And I'm not trying to be rude or anything, right? But And then same thing, right? I'm picking the dog that's going to be best for show for myself. And um, And also you want it to be the best dog for the people that are adopting it. Right, exactly. They may pick one and you're like, this dog isn't going to line up to your the way you live well, your life. yeah what if it's a dog super high energy and they're very relaxed laid back people mm-hmm. and i'm like well this dog would be way better for you because it is also very calm and laid back and so those are um i think most people are like oh i got to pick out my dog and they don't think about it that way but a good breeder is taking the time to fit each dog to the home it's being placed in to give it the best chance of success because yeah. that's the goal right is like you want that dog you don't want them to have to return it and go like whoa i didn't realize this dog was so crazy you yeah. know and that's a good point i never thought about that one. another like to me a super huge red flag if you hear this like get away right away is if they're trying to home the dog before eight weeks yes mm. oh my god well yes. it is illegal in california and yeah. probably many other states I can't tell you how many people they're like, yeah, I got it at six weeks. And I'm like, no, ah, it's no so important. reputable breeder. Nobody that cares about the puppies it would be placing a dog before that. It's super important. That time that they have with their siblings, it, yeah, they learn mom. so much in that time that taking them away earlier is very detrimental and can have a lot of neurological problems later. Yeah. It's not about the weaning or the food. Mm-mm. It's about the structure they are learning in the litter. And the the pecking order, and bite, bite inhibition, inhibition, that all comes <laughs> jinx. That all comes from uh, being kidding. with their siblings. <laughs> yeah. I got uh, had a Yorkie poo, and I got it at five weeks. So. Oh my god! Did it bite? No, no, no. But oh, nice. But that I mean, to when? your point, there was there was a lot that I had to do to make sure that it was healthy and a lot, you know. So I, I mean, yeah, that's a huge red flag. Well, mm-hmm. and then smaller breeds too will also they recommend not. The br- a good breeder will keep them till 10 or 12 yeah. weeks. Yeah. yeah. Well, for our yeah. Scotties, we keep them until 12 weeks. Yeah, we don't place our Scotties until they're 12 yeah, weeks. Yeah, Bashan's on average are 10, at least 10, if not 12. Yeah. Um, something else. Um, now my brain. Well, something brain I wanted to farted. discuss. <laughs> <laughs> something I wanted to discuss is it's just not showing AKC mm-hmm. confirmation. It's also, there are plenty of dogs who are well bred mm-hmm. that are well-bred to do a certain thing, mm-hmm. such as canine companions, right? They mm. breed all their own dogs. 
Um, but the dogs are all health tested. They're all temperament tested. They all come from, you know, lines that they can track. And people would always come up and ask, well, why don't you use rescue dogs? Rescue dogs need help. They're too unpredictable. Just mm-hmm. like the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. We, you can't guarantee certain things. You know, this dog, this line of dogs was bred to do service work. They have the drive. They have the temperament for it. They have the reliability. And they need that to work with someone. This is going to be someone's, yeah. you know, partner in life. And they need to be reliable. Yeah. And they need to be healthy. And they need all this. And you can't get that from rescues. I mean, and I am a big rescue person. I, all my youth. And yeah. even now, there's four puppies in the other room that <laughs> someone dumped on the side of the road at less than a week old. Mm-hmm. And now I'm stuck bottle feeding them because some irresponsible person mm-hmm. had let their mom get pregnant. And didn't want the responsibility, so they dumped him. Well, and I, you know, because I I have, of course, you know, then you'll get, like, those few people that are like, I have a service dog that I rescued. Sometimes it works out. Yeah. You get the odd lucky person here or there, right? But for the most part, you're wanting the, you know what I mean? The most success. Because I've known many people who did, like, rescue a dog or have a dog, and then they're like, I'm going to make it my service dog, and it just doesn't work out. Because not all dogs are meant for service work. Also, too, though, there's different levels of service work, right? Oh, for Mm -hmm. sure. Like, if you want a a dog as, like, a dog that'll comfort you, right? That's way Mm -hmm. easier to do. The dog just exists, and, like, but if you need a dog to help you tie your shoes and to help you... Pick Mobility, on and off your pick, shoes, pick help off you things. walk, help Open you doors. Blind, uh, bl- help blind people walk. That needs you need to have a dog that is or no solid. notice epilepsy, you know, notice you're about to have a seizure or and um, even with that, your the canines companions they do this rigorous breeding and rigorous tracking. Their success rate is still just under fifty percent. Under fifty percent. So mm-hmm. like, and that's with all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's also other aspects. So there are organizations like that that breed for work right but there are hunting lines Mm -hmm. and there are all kinds of things that dogs are purposely bred for although i will say if you're somebody who is looking you say you like those sporting hunting dogs and maybe you don't do that like maybe you do it once a year or something like that just know those don't get a field dog. those <laughs> dogs are such high drive, high mm-hmm. energy that if you're not somebody who consistently can take them out to do their job, don't do it because they are great dogs, but they need to do their job. Oh, yeah. they they're, are, they're they're bred to be driven. Yeah. <laughs> so if you get the bent, like I'm sure my English cocker could go work the field because he does have drive. He likes he likes birds and stuff. But he's calm <laughs> enough. I just picture him like. <laughs> I know he's yeah. such a doofus. <laughs> um, he's just gotta flush him. That's yeah. easy. <laughs> but he's calm enough to like live in the home, and he doesn't have so much. Um, he doesn't have so much drive that he makes us crazy. Yeah. And I, I will say there are different avenues like uh, working and sports and and people breeding for that. But the, I think the common denominator is they do understand structure of the dog and mm-hmm. health. And because right. a dog cannot work the fields or the sport if they're and not. If they get built. a dog with bad hips, they're not going to not know what that is and then breed it anyways to another dog with bad hips and then have puppies well, yeah, that can't they, walk. Yeah, because they're working the field. They have to be able to do their job. So I think just a basic understanding of anatomy and how dogs hit is like a basic thing that all breeders, like whether you're doing confirmation or anything, they that's like a must. You have to understand the dog, how it moves and how it mm-hmm. exists. Right, or supposed to exist. And how healthy it is. Yeah. So another um, red flag for me is um, anybody, any breeder who's asking you to do a pediatric spay or neuter. Yes. Um, mm. And that's something that I feel like is newer information. And it's, and it's tough, right, because there are still lots of veterinarians who recommend a pediatric spay or neuter. For anybody who doesn't know what that is, it's, um, I would say, neutering under a year, neutering or spaying under a year. Yeah. Um, because waiting until the dog matures, right? Because the big thing is, I mean, it's um, something that uh, the way we phrase it quite often is like, could you imagine castrating a young boy? And then what happens, right? The they just hormonally, don't mature. They, they become never... choir singers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm mean, yeah. really, you know, yeah. like yeah. they don't mature properly. Um, and so to that end, when you're doing that to your dogs, they don't mature properly either. So you, it's super you important can, to let their growth plates close 
and for them to grow up and have all the hormones come in properly. And I get like some people are like, I don't want to have like a, you know, this dog either go through a heat or or, marking or be or marking or. But I mean, honestly, I think with good training, that's not an issue. Um, not even good training. Like we train like <laughs> barely but, and, and our dogs are, are good. You know, what I mean? you, just, you just have to be like on it a little. They're decent. But and plus, even if even if dogs are spayed or neutered, they'll still mark. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of spayed. Well, I feel like a lot of people don't really give that much thought because it's, it's included in like almost every puppy package. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. They get yeah. all their pet vet things and then they get spayed or neutered within right. the first six months because it's included or it's right. part of the thing. Because I don't. Why do, why do you think that vets encourage it so often? Like, why I, do you think they like? I think they don't they don't trust the general society public to, to keep not their dogs keep their dogs from, from being impregnated. breeding. Right, and so I th I mean, because I can say like honestly, we get so many of our clients that come in and they'll be like, my dog my my dog is intact. Like, don't let her around any of the other dogs, right? And we'll go, oh, is she in heat right now? And they'll be like, no, why? That's, you yeah. know, and we're like, OK, well, they can hang out unless they're like in right in ovulation in the middle of like the heat, then like they're not going to get pregnant. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And same thing with the, you know, with the boys where they're like, I mean, obviously boys can impregnate a girl at any time. But, you know, it I just don't think a lot of people have a good understanding of how dog breeding works. Reproduction works at all. Yeah. yeah. And so. um so then they're like, I just don't want to deal with it at all. And mm -hmm. I think that the vets know that so many people, instead of just educating them, like, oh, so you have this puppy, so let's go over it, right? You have a girl. So when she goes into heat, that's when you're going to want to keep her away from all the other boys. And, you know, like, so you can crate her or you can, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. be careful if you let her out in the yard because if there's, like, a stray male <laughs> dog, they could potentially break in. Things happen, right? And yeah. just kind of give them the lowdown, right? And, but instead of doing that, they just go, like, spay and neuter yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think people look at it from a human perspective, right? We're the opposite, right? Yeah. Dogs get pregnant on their heat cycle. We tend not to. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of newer it vets, though, or a lot of vets I talk to recent now are are on board with uh, letting them mature. But yeah, I rescues too. Yeah, they're pr the rescues are like taking a deposit, mm -hmm. so they're still letting puppies get adopted, but they have like a contract signed with them that's saying after your dog's oh, so old, mm -hmm. it has to be spayed or neutered, and you have to send it proof, and then we'll give you a deposit back for that. Yeah, I mean, and I'm I'm sure people have seen like you could see a dog, you can tell when you look at a dog, like say a Doberman, you you look at it, you can tell if it's been had a pediatric spay or neutered mm -hmm. or not. You well, know? the other like thing... You can just tell by the way they're built. They don't yeah. get that chest. Their chest don't deepen. Their, they don't, their muscle mass isn't there. Their head isn't as broad. Yeah, they just don't look, like, grown, yeah. right? Well, and I think that the old, like, the old information, right, is they were like, oh, spay and neuter young because, like, there's chances of, like, different cancers if you don't fix your dogs or... Um, you know, and they didn't know the repercussions of early spaying and neutering, but now we know that there are a lot of things that can happen, um, early incontinence. Yeah. Um, and then now we know, right, that it can cause their like body to not form properly, which can cause issues down the line later. Joints. And um, yeah. Problems with their ligaments. joints and yeah. ligaments. Yeah. And I mean, and, and no, I, no one was doing it to be mean. No, like, no, no. It's all like because they were think everyone just, thought they were doing good, right? Yeah, I just think yeah. that they didn't know. But now that we've been doing these pediatrics spays and and neuters long enough to see the repercussions, now they're like, oh, you yeah. know, like, and then they started doing research and realized. So I had a dog who was a large breed dog, and she was a shepherd mix. And the vet's like, no, we got to spare. We got to spare. Like, he started pushing me at two months. We got to spare. We got to spare. I ended up getting her spayed at three months. Because also the thing for them is she was getting bigger, so the anesthesia would have cost more. Mm -hmm. So they used people that, too. Yeah. And um, she ended up being incontinent by five. Mm -hmm. um, she had joint and ligament issues her whole life she had needed both her acls replaced mm -hmm. by the time she was she had one done at five one done at six yeah. she ended up getting you know i don't know if it was all a tribute but she had hip issues and she had spinal issues and she had all these issues right and you know i spent over twenty thousand dollars trying to keep her keep in good her health in good health and yeah. well she, she ended up dying at 12 we had to put her down because she couldn't move anymore 
She was one that you had gotten early too, right? I had gotten her. She was around like six weeks when I got her. Because the, the, the person, she came from a coworker and she's like, my dad's going to just dump the litter, right? And mm. so Asshole. I well, took and her. She, always had, she was always weird. Behavioral wise, yeah. And Kat did so many, like she took her to so many classes, so many lessons. Oh, the dog was weird. The yeah. dog was but weird. But you know what though? Kat she is loves also weird. weird. She loves me French. though. Yeah, she She'd come into the people. salon and I'd be like, Lacey, and then she'd like get all happy. Yeah, she I was a good a dog. She was she a great was a dog. Very, she was weird around strangers, and she was weird uh, with certain dogs, and she was just, she had issues. Right? And the, Yeah, nothing you ever did made any no. difference. Well, I, I spayed Charlotte at, like, I think five months, because I, mm -hmm. I didn't know better at yeah. that time. Mm -hmm. And I do, like, when I look at her, it just doesn't look like she's, like, settled in. You mm -hmm. know, like, things didn't just, like, fall into place and, like, fully mature. And I get, I'm, like, worried about the future and what's going to happen it because makes you of that. think you yeah. know like if i had let her body mature would it be different and I, they sh the, like we've seen online like photos somebody will be like here's two siblings. dogs siblings from mm. the same litter this one got spayed early and this one didn't and it's wild yeah. The, yeah. there's a lab one and there's a really good side by side two litter mates one was neutered at six months and one was intact and the intact one is just gorgeous. He's got a big, broad head, and he's like a full chest, and he's just, and the other one's like dinky, and, you know, yeah. he just looks almost sickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, I mean, I think, like, maybe your average person might not look, realize when they look at their dog, but then when they look between two dogs, then they might be like, oh. And some of that's just, sometimes it's breeding, and they just don't yeah, know yeah. What, what they're breeding. Yeah. And the breeder don't know, but sometimes, yeah, it's just, breed, just neutering them early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also on that note about structure and everything, this isn't really to do with breeding, but those restrictive harnesses, do not use them on young oh puppies. My God, yeah. They pinch so many dogs in the front and then they're stuck and then they tend to go easty westy, which is, you know, feet out. Yeah. And they damage so many dogs. Don't use them on young yeah. puppies. You know, groomers out there, if you have puppies come into your salon and they have the harness that pushes their leg their front legs together. Please inform the owner that they should not be using those things because they are very damaging to their dog. And they're a bitch to put on. Yeah. <laughs> I never understand <laughs> those ones. I'm always like, here, you put it on. But like the, a lot of the people I at like Pet Food Express and Pet Mart and Petco, like they're pushing those because they do help the dog walk. Yeah. But at what cost, right? Yeah. Struggling. They need to just train their dog, Learning really. The but it, yeah, it is cheaper. To mm -hmm. buy a twenty-five dollar harness than it, it is, is to, to pay for a hundred fifty dollar class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's those. It's like not the gentle leaders, but it's made by the same. It, they're called Easy Walks. Easy oh, Walks, yeah. and they're the ones that look. Uh, well, like it goes around the top and then the chest, it and then it goes in around the front the here, and then it yeah. and it clips in the front. Yeah, but there's a lot of them like that that just basically restrict their movement. My dog to looks like, like a dinosaur. And then when the, it's like it, it it crunches or it crunches, it pulls them forward. Pulls but then it also in. when they're pulling, it like turns their whole like front half yeah, of their, their body. Yeah, their whole body. They're like wonky, like wink, wink. Yeah. Okay, here's yeah. my dog who looks like a dinosaur. <laughs> but you know, it go it clips on the front and then it goes over, mm -hmm. and th those ones. See what they make the dogs? Yeah, they pinch them in like this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, don't use them. Anytime one comes in my salon with a puppy, I always tell them. I always warn them. Be like, this hey, is not yeah, good. I, yeah, I would get something else. You know, I would talk to your vet Anything about it because even a lot of vet, a lot of veterinarians know about these things because they see it right in their mm -hmm. dogs. What else? Any other red flags for breeders? Mm -hmm. um, ones who don't care about their line, what happens after they leave? Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. I've there's a lot like both my dogs. They care about my my show dogs. They care about my dog's future. Like mm -hmm. in what they will produce, mm -hmm. they want their dogs to be their lines to be protected mm -hmm. and yeah. not to be all willy nilly bred. So uh, both my contracts state that my dog must pass all their health testing required for their breed, mm -hmm. and they must be AKC champions. Mm -hmm. And my male, um, she wants to know every female that's bred to him, so she can keep track of those lines as well. Mm -hmm. I do think a lot of people are worried when a breeder wants to be a co-owner. 
And I don't think that's a bad thing. Like I co-own, we co-own several of our dogs. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's just a sign. I mean, you can negotiate how that is. But to me, that's a sign that that breeder cares about that dog. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Both and they're, yeah, right. So co-owning is not a red flag. Some people think it is. It is not. Yeah, my first time when when I when I got a co-owned dog, I was like, "But it's mine, right? Like, it's still just it's mine." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just making yeah. sure it's they're mine. They're not. Yeah, they're not gonna just like <laughs> give me my dog back. Well, a lot, yeah, a lot of breeders have stipulations, but mm -hmm. that's to protect their dogs, yeah. right? Well, because like they love said, this. Yeah, dog. they've spent their heart and their soul producing these dogs. They only want what's best. They don't, and you know, and so their contracts will, if they're sold as a pet, right? Like, yes, you're not gonna, you know, I, uh, my contract says like. Don't spay or neuter until 18 months, but I'm expecting you to be responsible. No breeding this dog, you know, so um, that's in there, right? Like for me, like this is a pet, so it is going to be spayed or neutered. You cannot breed this dog, but wait until it's at least 18 months. Yeah. Um, so anybody, I would say, like if they don't have in their contract, right? Like they're just like, yeah, how, whatever, have the dog, breed it, full breeding rights, goodbye. That's generally well, a red flag. So my co ownership drops off at a point. Lumi's yeah. will drop off at once he's neutered. Mm -hmm. But right. Tallulah will drop off once she uh, has become past the requirements to have a litter. Mm -hmm. I think another red flag, right, is buying them off of Craigslist. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Lots of red flags. Red my flag. first poodle was from Craigslist. <laughs> no, actually, it was the auto shopper. <laughs> the back pages of the auto shopper. Mm. Oh, so we had a penny <laughs> saver. That's where my first mm. childhood dog was from, the penny saver. I will say I do think one of the bigger issues with finding a good, well-bred dog, right, is that um, a lot of breeders don't have a good website for you to find them on. Yeah. So, um, and that's something that like we had run into originally um, when we first started looking for a show dog is that we had to like, um, I, n not necessarily, I'm not sure what the right way of phrasing it, but we had to like jump through a lot of hoops to find somebody. And it was like, I didn't even realize because we had gotten our English cocker several states away, but there was like no easy way of finding breeders that were local. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. will say like most of our clients that do like buy dogs and come in, they'll be like, oh, I got this dog from, you know, like all the way across the country because there's no good breeders in California. Or but now no that, different country. Even. Yeah, or even other countries. They're like, there's no good dogs in America. And but now that we like show and we have a lot of connections, I'm like, there are hell of like good breeders in mm -hmm. our area. In every state. Yeah, in every state, but uh, like specifically, I'd be like, I can name like four off the top of my head for that specific breed that are right here in California and are great, you know. And I'm like, you know, I think uh, one of the issues like that is along with that is the people that can afford these websites with strong SEO and strong search engines mm -hmm. optimization are people that are breeding <laughs> for profit and they're Breeders. making enough they're greedy and they're making enough money to where they could have a better website mm -hmm. and pull wool over the people's eyes and it, it, like i feel bad for the general populations because you go online and you google what type of dog you want and then it's giving you this information like oh the, our breeding facilities in utah and we're farmers and no you're you're it's a puppy mill but yeah. they yeah. they're able to put a nice coat of paint on it mm -hmm. and make you think like you're researching the dog Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're just spewing a bunch of lies. But, like, so and not to say that you can't make money being a good breeder, but, like, for us specifically, for our Scotties, right? Like, I mean, just to show and championing my dogs, I'm spending tens of thousands of dollars, and I'm showing my own dogs, but just, like, taking the time off of work and entry fees and travel costs and, like, all of those things add up. And then doing the paying for the health testing, paying for... The breeding, paying for the C sections, and then after yeah, I saw like, the you make money, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and no. then buying all the things for the puppies I'd like and to, the but vet no. visits <laughs> and stud fees, and yeah, in the end, I'm not, yeah, I'm not making anything. I'm doing it for the love of the breed, well, and so, so we don't have a website yet. We're know. gonna start working on it, but we have to make it ourselves, and it's gonna be laborious and not so looking forward to it. So we know people know like what are the red flags, but how do how do you think they should? be finding a good breeder because that's really difficult we can help you <laughs> well number one we can help but i do think um one of the best ways is um going to that breeds um club page yeah. yep. um so like the scottish terrier club of america club of it, yeah. um yeah or um the English Cocker Spaniel Club of America or whatever. Sean, yeah. And you, it's tough, right? Because um, you can even go, AKC has a marketplace, 
but I can't say every single dog on there is from a good breeder. Um, so you have to be careful because I do think just as long as you're registered, because AKC is just a registry. Right. That's something like that people need to be aware of. It is only a record keeping company. They are not in charge of um, maintaining. Yeah. So people can be like, oh, well, I have a purebred poodle. And there's and also the papers. AKC Breeders of Merit. That's a good like check mark on. There that. are, but I also, I'm. There's plenty of breed, there good are, breeders who don't have that. There are good breeders who aren't breeders of merit, but then there are some breeders of merit that I know are not that great either. I'm not sure what the stipulations are for that. Um, so just because someone shows their dogs, mm -hmm. does that make them a good breeder either? Right. Absolutely. There so then what do we do? How do we know? <laughs> <laughs> really? So yeah. reputation is a big thing. Mm -hmm. You go to shows, you build up a rapport with people and stuff, and Talk to people who have yeah. had their dogs or who have their dogs. Well, and are they? Yeah. And I do. Th I do think like I look for several things. Like she said, like not just showing your dog, but then also health testing um, and going and meeting the the breeder in person, meeting the dogs to make sure that they have the personalities you're looking for, seeing their home to make sure that it's yeah. you know. And, and then I pay attention at. Not that this is always an indication of anything, but how many litters are they putting out a year? And it, it's also like it's a lot of work, but you're you're purchasing this puppy and it's going to be in your life for almost 20 years. So like you, you should put in the work and be patient. Some people are so in a rush. They're I like, gotta I want have a puppy, puppy now. now. And then <laughs> jinx again. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> But uh, that's the biggest thing I see is people that are like, I just, I want a puppy now. And then they end up settling because they just want it now. And then it's not well-bred. It's a huge commitment. It's a huge commitment. And um, they're worth the wait. They are worth yeah. the wait. Absolutely. Yeah. Often, I would say for a good breeder, if you're looking for a certain gender or a certain thing like that or certain attributes that you need for your home, you're often on a list for a year or two. Mm -hmm. yeah. Three? You yeah, I was. Uh, Lindsay Dickin texted me because um, <laughs> we're friends. She said she and likes our so, podcast, too. and she told us she, she liked our podcast, which nice. is cool. And I was like, Do you like it? Because we, we talk about you every a, time. Yeah, I know. And she was like, Yeah. So the, here's your shout out for, for the day. <laughs> for this Daily. Lindsay Dickin's shout out. Um, but anyway, I've been on. I've been wanting a, a Bichon from her, a female Bichon from her personal. So I, I'm like specific on what I want. It's been two years, two and a half years, yeah. and I just got the text about. Hey, it's happening. Are you ready? Nice. You know, so I'm ready. Right on. Super Fist excited. Bump. Boop, boop. And then you're gonna get another beach And then we're gonna get another from from the Tulules. <laughs> but so taking it back, if you go, if you find the breed you're looking for, if you find their club page, it will have like all the different breeders. Um, that and that means that they have to be club members. Um, and so a lot of clubs have a lot of different requirements. Like the Bashan Club is very stringent on who they allow, right, Kat? Yep, still not in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so for them, it's uh, what is it for your club? Um, so originally they're changing some of the bylaws and stuff, but it was like 10 years mm -hmm. in um, in Bashan's, right? In Bashan's, or I think it's 10 years in dog related like confirmation and stuff mm -hmm. and then five years of that in Bichon's. Well, but they're they're, cha time. they're changing it up a little bit so there's like a so those are like voting members. Mm -hmm. And so they're they're adding a new level. Oh, like associate not, like associate level yeah. where it doesn't have as many requirements. Mm -hmm. Like I appreciate how strict they are sometimes uh, but then it's also discouraging. It is very it's, discouraging. It's very, it feels very gatekeepy yeah. and like you want your breed to grow and stuff. But, so you know, if I wait, you know, I had Bashans as a kid, but does that count? I've been a dog member for 20 years. Does that count? I, I know yeah. Bashans the, were on like a really big uptick, right? In they the were. 80s. And like, mm -hmm. I think there was a lot of people getting into Bashans at that time. They were just in it for the money. Well, they worried about the backyard breeders. So mm -hmm. they probably put on all these well, they're so cute to try to keep they're that cute. under control, right? And I think they did a pretty good job about it, right? Yeah. And th like I said, they are loosening mm -hmm. some stuff. So... They're trying to make it easier so it's not so hard. Um, right. And hopefully I'll be a member soon. Yeah. One day. Well, I've been to three <laughs> national specialties. I've had Lumi for two years now. Yeah. Oh. I'm excited Getting to be closer. Sean Buddies. With you. Yeah. Are you, gonna sh are you getting a show, girl? I think so. Nice. Nice. Well, but uh, I 
I also went to Lindsay for a Bashan because I wanted someone who was a competitor. I was looking for a very certain niche because mm-hmm. I wanted someone who was a competitive groomer as well because mm-hmm. I bought Lumi for a purpose. He right. had a job. I wanted a show dog and I wanted a competition dog. So I wanted a breeder who was familiar with both because there were definitely gro- breeders over here who did it, but they weren't competition groomers. So I went to Lindsay and she didn't have anything. And I originally wanted a girl, but then she's like, oh, well, my friend Amanda has a litter and she has some really nice looking boys. Yeah, and I think yeah, good breeders out. that care about the breed won't just be like, I'm not sure that you want. They'll, they'll like, oh, this person, this my no. friend or can help you out. Yeah. And point you of like, in the no, direction of, a, of another the good breeder. So if you can only find like a one one breeder that you trust, they might be able to point you in the direction of a friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Green flag. Well, Green like, flag. Yeah. <laughs> for um, the Scotty Club, right, it did take me like two years to get accepted in. So I do think, uh, you know, there is room for improvement uh, there too. But f- like for us, there was like a lot of questions, you know, like have you bred before? Have you, you know, like all of these like different things. But then you have to have two sponsors. So somebody who is already a club member has to sponsor you. And so I think that does help kind of filter out you know because then you'd have to have two like if you were People not a good you. breeder if you were like a backyard bad scotty breeder you'd have to get two other people to agree to sponsor you and the you know uh, hopefully we don't really have any backyard breeders in the club right so then who's going to sponsor you right. and that was when i went to my local bashan club of mm-hmm. the, San, the bay uh, northern california i needed two sponsors and you also need that with the parent club as mm-hmm. well um, but yeah, those are people backing. They want people who are committed to the mm-hmm. breed. Well, and I've I've seen what happens when people don't commit to it, or like yeah. I've seen people try to show their dog, and their dog isn't up to par, mm-hmm. and then they go, "Well, these people can't tell me, right? Mm-hmm. My dog is good, even though it's not." Mm-hmm. So then they just give up on that whole side, and then just start breeding them, anyways. And you can imagine what happens, right? They don't have the understanding. Yeah. So they produ- They just produce not typey dogs. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, so anyway, if you go to the club websites, they can direct you to breeders in your area. And like Kat said, then, I mean, they can recommend you to, s- you're like, oh, you know, I'm not going to have a litter this year, but I have this other person who I know who's really great. And you know what I mean? And so it's just kind of vetting for yourself and doing your research and, um, being patient and looking into the person, looking for all those different things. Um, and I know it can be hard for some people to be patient and really like, you know, look at those things. That's hard for us. Yeah. We've all, we've, <laughs> well, and I mean, uh, also we've done learning. That. <laughs> well, yes, we have, we've all but done you learn. It. Yeah. You. We've, we've learned a lot each time. I buy a dog and something doesn't work out. I've learned a lesson, An 18 you know? year lesson. Wow. But I we love still them. love them, and they're great I pets. love them anyway. And they have different yeah. attributes. Your dogs, you can all use in competitions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that they have a secondary job. Mm-hmm. So they're not duds. They may not be a great show dog, but mm-hmm. they're great in other like attributes. You you learn as you go. Like my first mm-hmm. poodle I thought was so beautiful, and then the more I knew, I was like, oh, her neck is short. Mm-hmm. Her her legs are her, what is it, her um, shoulders? Her, her shoulders. Lay back, yeah. yeah, her lay back. There it is. Um, is not great in her her uh, croup is anyway. So then and I got my Francine. I was like, oh my god, look at this and look at this and look at this. But then it's like, okay, well now I see this and this. So it's like you nitpick your own dogs, mm-hmm. and it's like every dog you get, it's you better. like want to get better and better and better. Well, now if you ever get another standard poodle, right, you're gonna you'll be able to evaluate. Oh yeah, I'll evaluate. You'll myself. be in the yeah. evaluation, well, knowing yeah. what you're looking for. Yeah. And something though, right, is like I feel like when we first started, there wasn't an easy way to find out this information. Like right. there was nobody that was like okay, so when you're looking for a breeder, look for this, this, and this. And, like, you know what I mean? So that's why we wanted to do this episode, right, is to, like, let people know, like, do. And I'm always happy to, like, you know. I was going to say finding a mentor. Yeah, finding a mentor. That can help you with that. Well, yeah, reach out. <laughs> ask us questions. We'll gladly help. Well, I mean, I've had clients go, like, oh, I looked at this this website. What do you think? And then I'll go look at the website, and I'm like, no. <laughs> pass on that. Hard pass on pass. that. Yeah. So I'm always happy to look at a website and tell you if I think they're full of shit or not. <laughs> because there's so it's pretty easy. Yeah, it's easy <laughs> to lie. Um, I came across this beautiful, beautiful website, and it was a doodle breeding website 
They, um, some of those doodle breeders have beautiful yeah. sites. Well, they make the money, right? Yeah. But <coughs> I, they, I feel like they're disguising their backyard breederness mm -hmm. with uh, the companion home term yeah. have you oh, guys heard of that yeah it's like it's like oh we we place our dogs in a companion home and they're part of our breeding program but that way it's like they just give out you know they're still puppy breeders or mm -hmm. backyard breeders puppy males i want to say so when people are use the backyard breeder term it doesn't mean the dogs are born in the backyard right mm -hmm. it just means that they're basically turning these dogs for profit because yeah, a lot of the best breeders out there are breeding just out of their home in their backyard yeah. Yeah. like type of thing so it's just like a term we've had lots of clients come in though with companion pets where they're like oh yeah like the breeder gave me this dog for free but they get it back for breeding and it's like always matted and all mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then they like breed it like constantly and then the owners are kind of like oh but there are certain certain situations where that does happen for I mean, uh, breeders that aren't doing it in a bad way. You know? Well, yeah. I mean, I have, I, it's really great when say maybe you have a dog that you bred and you kept and you showed it and you finished it. And then say you have several bitches already and somebody comes to you and says like, I'd like a more mature dog and you go, well, you know, I have this dog, but would you be interested in, you know, like I can't keep all these dogs, right? Because we can only have so many would you be willing to let me have, you know, have it back for a breeding or two? And, you know, so that does happen responsibly, yeah. but it's generally not placing puppies in a home and breeding it like a shit ton of times. And you know what I mean? Like it's usually something that's kind of worked out and in giving the dog back in a whole bad condition. Right. Cause There's we've had some of the doodle companion dogs that come back and from being bred and I mean, from being whelped and everything, and they're in bad shape. Oh, yeah, they look terrible. Underweight yeah, the and matted. Pants, every time they come back, you could see it in their eyes that they're like, this is not good. Like, you, you could tell that they're like, I did not, <laughs> I am not for this no more. But, mm -hmm. like, they're, like, binded by this contract, you know? Yeah. Well, they're just like, I get a free dog. Yeah. Yeah. Or, like, I just paid half the amount. I only paid 3000 Oh, yeah, six. that's true, and too. I just got to give my dog up twice a year. To oh, like you know what? Something, uh, sorry, it just struck me. And not to say, so this one's, a, this one's a tough one, right? But I do know that there are breeders out there that charge an exorbitant amount more for a show dog. I and think it's BS. I find that weird. Um, you know, like, I mean, I have seen like where it's like maybe only 500 more or something like that, but I've seen where it's like several thousand more, but to me, it just doesn't quite make sense because I'm raising all the dogs the same. I'm not doing anything different because all of them have potential. I don't know until mm -hmm. the end, right. Who's going to have show potential and who's not. So I'm cultivating all of them for my yeah. potential, right? Because ultimately I'm not breeding to sell puppies. Ultimately I'm breeding to enhance my line and hoping I get something out of the litter that I can show um, that's going to be better than what I have now. Yeah. Um, and um, so I'm not doing anything different, so I don't know why I'd sell it for more. But also, like, if I have something of show quality that I can't keep all the puppies, like we just said, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have somebody who's like, hey, I'm interested in showing, I want to cultivate that. I'm like, yeah. yes, AKC needs more people showing. So yes. I'm not going to charge you more for something I did exactly the same. Yeah. It's also saving me money because now I don't have to pay to show that dog. I, um, and mm -hmm. I'm still getting a champion under my name. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's a red flag, though, because I think there are good breeders out there that do that. Well, I, just, that's I, why, I just think that's it's just I a said. weird thing. It, it's, it's just weird that, like... Well, that's why I said, like, I've had... We don't charge more. I've for, had people where they just charge, like, a little bit more. But I've also had people where, like, maybe the dog was, like, three, 4,000. And then they, they're they like, oh, for show, 8,000. And that's I crazy. Think maybe, I, I think, think they're discouraging it. And maybe they're, they're not being truthful about the quality of the dog being showable. Yeah, and they're, they're probably trying to discourage them from taking that dog, champing it, and breeding it themselves. Maybe you know, that maybe too. they're like trying to suppress people from. But that's so gatekeepy. Well, yeah, that's if, the world we live in. If people not, suck sometimes. If you're yeah. not serious about, well, and I think also too, maybe if also they're like, oh, to I to was gonna show this dog, but I'll sell it to you now, and then they think the person's not gonna like. They're gonna be like, oh wow, what a great pet, but then they're like, oh maybe I'll show, and then they're like, 
uh oh, that dog actually <laughs> isn't show quality, it's, but now I'm stuck. It's it's tricky though, right? Because you definitely don't want someone to be like, just buy your dog and then just start breeding it. So you, well, that's you why have you have, but contacts. that's why you have contracts and yeah. you co-own dogs. Yeah. If it's somebody that you don't know, if they're gonna follow through. Or if they have the, I mean, you also have a good feeling if somebody has good intentions or not. You can tell if somebody's passionate and really interested in showing. Yeah, it's a, just such a tricky thing. It is very tricky. And I'm not, like I said, that's why I was like, I don't want to say necessarily that somebody that charges more is a bad breeder, but it's something that I, I mean, like I said, if it was like a $4,000 difference, that's mm -hmm. something I'd be like, run away. That's not, a, you know, but I have seen people that charge a little bit more. Me personally, I feel like it should cost the same yeah, because well, I'm we put trying in the to, same amount of work. I'm I want trying my dogs, to encourage yeah. people to show. I and, want my dogs to be champions. Well, I mean, and Scotties are considered a heritage breed now, so like I'm trying to be as encouraging as possible to people to get into my breed and show and learn proper confirmation and um, breed themselves at some point. It's you know, like I want more Scotties out there. I love them very much, so I'm yeah. not going to try and hold anybody back if they're truly interested. Yeah. Yeah. I thought of another red flag. Um, <laughs> now that we're thinking about it. <laughs> but because uh, I've heard it recently, but someone trying to sell you two puppies from the same litter. Mm, yes. Yeah. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. It's called litter mate syndrome. And, you know, mm -hmm. there are people who can raise two puppies from the same litter successfully. Mm -hmm. I've but never often. Seen it. They always are weird. Well, no, I mean, we've had mm -hmm. two I mean, dogs. Yeah. I mean, um, the breeders do it more often because well, they can't decide. Neptune and Disa, while they're not actually siblings, they rode together from okay, three months I, on. That's different, though. I'm talking about like pet parents. I, just okay, so I've never yes, given that's it what I'm saying. Like any pet thought. Parents. Like, what do you mean by yeah, sibling explain syndrome? It. So, uh, so basically, the puppies are raised together, right? But they don't. They get it too attached to each other. Oh, okay. so okay. you okay. have to raise them like they're separate dogs. But often people don't have the time and the energy to commit to that. That makes sense. So they That's raise where these you dogs. Get those dogs where they come in the salon and they can't be separated, or they freak the fuck out. Yeah, they freak out. They, they drool. Tend to they want to like jump off the tables to get to each other. They they're bark super, the whole time. Yeah, super bonded. Like those don't human, like you. those twins that they're like they're <laughs> sixty and they still wear like matching outfits. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Okay. It was yeah. Cute when you were four. So <laughs> people don't get that like dogs will do that they will just attach to each other instead of you and mm -hmm. so then they'll be like i mean maybe they'll be lovey with you too but they're so attached to each other because you go to work right and then they're home with each other mm -hmm. and then they just become so attached to each other they become crazy but also if you go to a breeder and you're like i'm interested in getting a dog and they're like how about two they're just mm -hmm. trying to get rid of them yeah and why are they trying to get rid of them because mm -hmm. they're not yeah because maybe they can't find anybody else or then you hold on to them or and find there, the right There was home. something I, I heard recently too, another one where they're like, if you buy one, I'll give you the other one half off. <laughs> <laughs> Bogo. Like that's... Buy I would have done that with my one. Frenchie though. I would have <laughs> <laughs> Buy one Frenchie, get one half off. Like it's just like, that's weird. Also, you know? another red flag. <laughs> uh, breeders breeding for color. Um, I see yeah. it a lot yeah. with the Frenchies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Merle is not a naturally occurring, mm -hmm. so they bred something in that dog's line down the road. So check your standard. Yeah, well, your same standard thing. will tell you about color and also so people many will show people will show genetic testing and it'll say the Frenchie is only Frenchie, but it only goes back so far until it's Four diluted too much. Right. So, but if you're if the Frenchie is blue Merle, it is a mix, one hundred percent. So if you are looking for a specific breed and you you know like. You're like, I want, like we said, like a Merle Frenchie or even they're freaking breeding Merle Poodles. They don't have that color. So if you look at the breed standard, you'll be able to see, right? I mean, we've had so many schnauzers, miniature schnauzers that come into our salon that are off color, significantly off color, Chocolate, not even just a little um, wrong colored Merle's. eyes, wrong colored coat, wrong textured coat. And they're selling them as rare Oh, buy this rare chocolate schnauzer with the, you know, the Blue mega eyes. coat. Yeah. And, Blue eyes. Uh, and yeah, those coat. are all super improper. That mm. means they're mixed. So if you are looking for a specific breed, look at the breed standard I, because you'll you, then you'll know because you can look at like disqualifications or 
um, what colors that they do come in or um, different things like that. Faults, yeah. Faults. And um, so then you'll know if you look at a website and they're selling the rare chocolate schnauzer well, that I, you're being scammed. I do think it's funny how they use rare, but like if I take my car, <laughs> if I take a, a Volkswagen bus and I cut it in half and attach it to a Toyota Tacoma, <laughs> it is the rarest, it is the rarest truck van hybrid you've ever seen <laughs> so yeah. buy it's it. so rare mm-hmm. like that's basically what like there's a reason it's rare it's because people aren't breeding for it and right it's so, oh, disqualification well and then so you've it's not got rare it's it's like a, a made right. a fictional rarity well and something that i think is interesting and doesn't necessarily make anybody a bad breeder so this is another one that is not necessarily a red flag but just something to think about um is like in america in akc Party poodles are not accepted mm. for showing. You can register them as purebred, but you can't show them. Um, and same with like sizes for poodle. Here we have toy, miniature, and standard. In other countries, there is a fourth size that's between mini and standard. Not all of the countries are like that, but some other countries do have a fourth one. Um, and some other countries do let you show party. But so then when you have a breeder here in America who is breeding for those different things, it always just makes me wonder because they can't show them. So yeah. if they're breeding the Moyen size, right, they can't show <laughs> one. They can't show them. They show in UKC. Okay? Yeah, in UKC. Um, There's very good dogs and breeders in UKC. Too. There yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, there are. Um, but also there are some, there are some <laughs> really not <laughs> ones, and that's why they show in UKC. Um, so I would... So that yeah. I just mean like it's something to think about because the parties they can't show and I'm not saying that they're bad dogs but I'm just saying like then you can't get the same yes I could say oh I know this Scotty well enough that I could look at a dog and tell if it's well bred and inbreed standard but can I though if I you know what I mean like to what extent are you trusting somebody to say well I haven't had so many judges look over my dog and say it fits the breed standard just me myself and I and then you're trusting that person to be like accurate yeah, yeah. under mm-hmm. what you know what I mean I would say an overall picture of all of this is do your research yep. be yeah. responsible yourself be, be responsible <laughs> can't talk um Because that is the most important thing and the thing we see day in and day out with Mm -hmm. pet parents. How many breeders, also red flag, how Mm -hmm. many breeders, mostly doodles, lie to them Mm -hmm. saying, oh, this dog doesn't need to be groomed for the first year of its life. Oh, it doesn't need that much maintenance. It's it's an easy breed to maintain, right? Lie. You know, the breeders who are lying to you, if you do your own research... You're protecting yourself. And not research on breeders' pages. No, research like your really, own. Really, really research. Look at the AKC standard. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're hoping Even if you don't want to show. Yeah, huh? even, even if, if you, you don't, don't want to show. Yeah. yeah, because... Well, I mean, I can't tell you how many times... Um, you can just tell the person didn't do any research. We'll get clients that come in and they'll go, I want a Yorkie cut. And then we go, well, there is no Yorkie cut because Yorkies are a drop coat breed. And they're like, what? And then you pull up the photo of a Yorkie in a drop coat and you're like, well, this is this is a Yorkie cut because this is the standard. And then they're like, well, I don't want that, you know, and they just have no clue. They're like, I've never even seen that before. How could you not have seen a Yorkie in show coat before buying your dog? <laughs> like, not that you have to have bought it from a dog in show coat, but that just tells me you didn't like even type in anything in the computer that, you know what I mean? Or like mm-hmm. did a m- <laughs> research. We had a client come in with a like a maybe 10 week old St. Bernard Mm -hmm. and they're like um, they're like yeah this is as big as she's gonna get and you know she's only gonna get a little bigger 10 week old St. Bernard (laughs) and we're like oh they actually ended up getting it back they they, they, never came again and we're like no this is gonna be a big dog Mm -hmm. this dog was over 25 30 pounds and they were like what and then we're like yeah have you seen the movie like Beethoven Beethoven? yeah this dog is gonna easily be it was a girl, so You're maybe have to 80, walk 90. With a rag mm-hmm. for the next 15 years. <laughs> a drool rag. Well, a drool rag. Well, no, not 15. <laughs> no, not probably 15. 12. Probably 10 or 12, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you know, like, yes, a good breeder should be, like, giving you certain information, right? But, like, if you're not doing any research, you're probably not buying it from a good breeder. Yeah. And uh, an unethical breeder is going to just Take sell it. They're, it. they're a salesperson. They're there to sell that dog to you and make money and just get it off their backs, right? So they are going to lie. So that's yeah. why doing your own research and knowing like what you're getting into. 
another thing. <laughs> and another one. And another There's one. So another much. one. Like I don't think it like this whole thing is like We'll probably think of other things after this episode yeah. and then have to do another one. Yeah. Another one. But <laughs> this isn't a red flag and it's not a green flag necessarily. What did you call me? A red flag. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me off guard now. Um, Is it ref for, for a fag? <laughs> yeah, for, for a fag. Anyway. double-legged. But anyways, um, seeing the dog's lineage, too. Mm. Watching lines. Just because there are some breeders who do what's called line breeding, mm -hmm. but they need to line breed them in and line breed them out. Line breeding is breeding close to, like, close relatives, uncle yeah. to uh, niece kind of thing. And it does happen, but they have yes. to make sure... You, if they're breeding in, they breed it out. Well, and the thing that I think, I mean, I think of people put a lot of their, like, our human, human emotions onto that, and they're like, oh, my God, the uncle. But, like, dogs, number one, dogs literally don't care. But also, we're trying to keep, like, type. we're trying to keep type, right? So if you outbreed too far, then suddenly your dog starts losing its typiness, attributes, yeah. its attributes, because the whole goal is to fit the breed standard. So we're trying to keep it tight so that we keep the dogs looking the way that they're supposed to. So I think that confuses a lot of people because obviously for humans, we're trying to have genetic diversity and not the other way around. We've seen the repercussions of that. Um, <laughs> but dogs are not the same. Like if you, I mean, obviously if you do too tight of line yeah, breeding, no then, siblings, then no you're father, gonna, daughter, no mother, son, then you're going to end up with those, uh, you know, extra toed, you know, wonky ass babies. But if like it's the double back do claws, they yeah. just go up the back. <laughs> yeah, and then you're gonna start end up with funky ass stuff. But that's it's important to you want, like she said, breeding in, breeding out a little bit, breeding back in, not too close, but close enough. Yeah. And so learning all of that stuff is important. But but I think yeah, we'd go on forever. Yeah, <laughs> about all the things. Well, I keep thinking of things. Well, stop. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I feel like, is there anything else? Can no. anybody think of anything else? Not this. Should we moment. do something? Should we get, uh, sh well, this was a very we, serious conversation. <laughs> what, what, were we at? what are we at time wise? 137. But it wasn't because we talked oh, for yeah, like the first 20 minutes. Right, why don't we do like a would you rat, uh, like something's funny. Something's well, that's funny. why I was going to, um, what about? Because um, that was pretty downer. That was a downer episode. I don't think it was a downer episode think because I think it was. I think it was very. Ed you always think because there's been several okay, funny, others. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we hope that you found that all informational. If you have anything that you like, any breeder questions, like oh, what about this or that, let us know. Um, or if you can think of anything, or if you are don't agree with something that we said, like. Feel free to give yeah. us your rebuttals. You yeah, know, definitely. like we're always open Let's fight. to. <laughs> well, we're, fight. we're also <laughs> four we're against always, one. <laughs> <laughs> we're always willing to learn new things, and I'm not going to say that we're like 100 percent perfect and know everything. So if you're like, well, actually, I think this because of this, this, and this, I'm willing to listen. I'm happy to listen and learn. Um, or if you have other red flags we didn't name or green flags, yeah, um, send them in. But we'll end it with one more deep card just to uplift it a little bit yeah do you have any recurring dreams and what are they about do <laughs> nightmares count yeah mm -hmm. i only have yeah. nightmares and it's usually like me like you leaving me or something i don't know <laughs> i know She's he does he uh, he'll wake up and be like you're not gonna leave me right i'll never leave you it's okay nathan we're stuck in a good way in the best of ways i have two <gasps> tell us um one is that my teeth crumble Oh. oh god! Like once a week, maybe my oh teeth my are like. God. What does like, that mean? That means so it means it? That, like beautiful teeth. Thank you. It means that like I looked it, it up and it says that I feel like my life is out of control, mm. or that I I um I'm spreading myself too thin. Mm. Um, yeah. So that's one of them. I don't believe those though. But I don't like. I don't think I'm doing too much, and I don't Dream think analysis. I'm spreading myself mm. too thin. But it's like, well, if I have it like all the time, maybe I like had watch a stressful movie or something before mm. I went to sleep. Yeah. Um, but then my Stressful. other one, my second one is that I'm, all, I feel like I'm always like I show, I, I'm at a school and I'm all, like late for class, but then I like didn't do the oh homework and then oh, no. I'm like trying, I'm running, trying to find the classroom and I'm, there's always so many stairs, mm -hmm. so many stairs. Oh. And it's just like, I sit in the class and it's like pop quiz and it, it's, I don't know why. Stressful. That sounds terrible. Yeah. Stressful. It, it's stressful. So I guess there are nightmares as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nightmare. Okay. Well yeah. saying that makes me think, uh, I, mean, I, I was, have, yeah. I was trying to think about it and I was like, do I? 
but I do the same thing where I haven't had it in a long time, thank God. But um, I used to have a lot of recurring dreams about school, it, even after I was out of school for a yeah. long time where I dream that I couldn't remember any of my classrooms. So I couldn't remember I my that schedule. same exact one. I couldn't yeah. remember my schedule order. And I'd be like, do I have history? Do I have, um, yes. I have this, do I have like, math? You know, and what hey. class is it in? I don't even know. Yes. And I'd be yes. wandering around like the bell is ringing. I'm going to be late. And I don't know where I'm yes. supposed to be. Or it's like the final. And you're like, but I haven't been here all year. Like, how am I supposed yeah. to? So I have that exact dream down to all the, the time. Yeah. But right, but I don't it's get it. not I think as it's, bad anymore. I don't dream about school. Okay. I looked it up. School-related dreams usually occur if you're feeling insecure or anxious in your waking life, especially mm. if you're going to be judged by an authority figure. Okay. Dreaming oh. about being underprepared for a test typically indicates that you feel underprepared for an upcoming event, such as an interview or presentation. So wow. yeah, I do I feel like lost schedule one I feel time. like since I've owned my own business, I haven't had it. So maybe it was just working for other people. Mm. <laughs> I will have a I reoccurring have dream. A dr I will have a reoccurring dream sometimes where I'm just like doing my normal stuff, and I hate that. I used to have like I just wake up and I just had an eight hour shift. <laughs> you know what I do? I like just got home from an eight hour shift and wake up. I'm like, you mean oh. memories? <laughs> yeah, basically, just, I'm just like, PTSD at work. It sucks. No, you know what dream I have a lot uh, is working, but I'll be, it'll be like the day, so much of the day has passed and I haven't started a single dog and they're all back there waiting and it's almost closing time. And I'm uh. like, I'll never finish in time. I'm going to be here so late today and I'm stressed out about having to get my dogs done. I thankfully have no grooming dreams. Okay. So then you wake up so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a recurring nightmare when I worked at PetSmart because you would often be in the back by yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And I always had this dream that a dog would attack me <gasps> and like I'd be like bleeding out in the back and no one would find me. <laughs> or a client coming at me and like shooting me because I, I shaved their dog or something, you know? I used to have that daydream while I was working, <laughs> but not like at night. No, I you just would hurt yourself constantly. I'm a day, own. yeah, I'm a daydreamer. So I'm constantly making up scenarios in my head that hurt my feelings. But the one where I was bleeding out, you know how they had those little trough things in the middle of the room? My, yeah, my blood would be going down that and then I'd die. I even you want to clean up though, then you just hose it down. Real quick. Yeah, easy clean up, I guess, for my. I wanted it to be up. a funny ending, but like. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Oh, okay. I'll I don't know. I'll tell you the one other. <laughs> no, let's talk about nightmares. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the one other recurring dream that I have, and it's not mm. a nightmare, usually. Is it the one where you wake me up afterwards? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> that one's not very recurring. That's not usually a dream. That's usually I'm reading a book after you <laughs> go to sleep. Anyway. <laughs> um. No, but I have a dream sometimes that I can um, I can jump and almost like fly and like control how high or how low I go. But it's always a jump. It's not like a straight up fly. It's like I'll jump and like be able to like go really, really high and really, really far and then like come back down and I'll have to jump again. You're like a flea. It kind of. Yeah. And it's really it, it can be really cool. And it's like exhilarating because I'll get that like feeling when you're coming down of like, ooh, like a roller coaster. Butterflies. Yeah, the butterflies. And I'll just go and go and go but then usually i end up out of control and like crash so you know but it's fun while it lasts have you ever had one of those things like right as you're falling asleep you like jerk your body yeah, up super it's, hard it's, mm -hmm. it's something that happens to, to me a lot yeah like i'll think about somebody it. like pulling a towel out from under me or a sheet yeah and then my those. whole body will go Ugh. usually i feel like i'm falling like it's like i'm falling mm -hmm. and i'll jerk yeah. wink. but there's something i just Saw an article about it recently. I don't remember what it said. Cause Dreams about falling may reflect feelings of inadequacy <laughs> or a sense that your life is out of control. <laughs> no, what about <laughs> when you're falling <laughs> asleep and you control. and you jerk yourself awake? It's a like a reflex of some sort or something. Yeah. Mm. Falling asleep, jerk yourself awake. <laughs> uh, that, what's okay when you, you put falling it. asleep, jerk? What comes up? What's <laughs> what auto fills that? Nothing. Oh. Falling Jerk. asleep, twitch awake. Yeah, or jerking Let's see. awake. During this transition, as you drift to sleep, you might feel a twitch that jolts you awake. These twitches, known as hypnic jerks or sleep, sleep starts, involve <laughs> brief contractions of one or multiple muscles and can be accompanied by other sensations, such as the feeling of falling. But mm. why? Sleep start. My, I would but just why? like to know why. More like sleep finish. Like, what the <laughs> heck? It woke me up. Okay, so I thought of another dream I have often, and it's not, there's no death or anything involved. Um, but it's me and Bill McFadden are getting ready to go in the ring, but they said that it's time to show right now. And 
Bill, uh, my dog is sopping wet, like completely <laughs> sopping wet. And uh, Bill's dog's all pretty and perfect. And Lumi is just like sopping wet. They're like, and I'm trying to show him. <laughs> but I don't know why I have that one a lot, mostly before shows. Sounds like a night, another nightmare. It isn't. I said it's a nightmare, <laughs> but it doesn't involve death. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Nathan. I, we failed you. <laughs> we both. I, I just have nightmares too. That's all I remember. I wish I had better dreams. But I think that's a reason. I think your nightmares scare you more, so they stick with you. Well, where I have weird dreams. I just don't remember them all. I was gonna say I think I'm the only one. I don't know if you do. You remember a lot of your dreams? Yeah. I remember a lot of my dreams, and I have wild dreams. Like I love. I used to. I'm not so more. Like I don't remember them as much as I used to. But I used to be like so excited to go back to sleep to get back into my dreams. I'd be like, man, I can't wait for tonight because my dreams last night were freaking lit. <laughs> have you ever been able to like control your like, you yeah. know, you're dreaming. So you're like controlling the yes. dream. Yes. The can jumping you, you is that? like yeah. that. It's well, fucking not all the so time, cool. But, not. Yeah. yeah. Not every time. But when you can yeah. lit. Well, and then I want to learn how to lucid dream. Oh, that's what it's called. It, I was just telling them I had a dream last week of like petting a whale and like <laughs> it was freaking cool it like the whale came up i was like on the shore and it like squirted a little water at me like come on follow me it was being very coy and so i followed it into the water and then it, i'm like uh, what happened next <laughs> like, yeah what the heck? no and then she brought me coy. to her baby and then we just played in the ocean for a little bit it was lit see in my dream so the innocent. whale would be eating me so sweet yeah i only have whale would be eating me <laughs> <laughs> i'd be killer <laughs> whale and I'm I wonder what I, in my dream, what I'd be doing with the whale. Oh. I'm normally scared of the ocean, too. So <laughs> what does this here blowhole do here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me examine that. <laughs> <laughs> to jail. <laughs> to jail, yeah. Nathan. To jail. I only have nightmares. I can only remember my nightmares. <laughs> I love dreams. I love them a lot. Okay. I like Good sleep, for though. you. Now we'll be wrapping it up. Yeah, let's oh. wrap this <laughs> thing up. This, this let me find my right Depressing Whoa. ass episode. <laughs> It's All not right. depressing. No, it's, it's educational. Not. It's it was educational. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> thanks for tuning into another grooming podcast. <laughs> Subscribe, like, rate, follow, all the things. Do all the things, guys. We really enjoy making these. We hope you really enjoy watching them. Um, mm -hmm. Like we said, leave us comments, send us messages. We want to hear like your stories and your all rebuttals. the things. Yeah, ro your rebuttals, any of it, all of it. Send it to us. Yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs>